scheduled for a 15 minute time limit. Introducing first out of the blue corner, representing Brazilian Fight Factory, Austin, Texas. He is the number four ranked middleweight no gi grappler in the world. Please welcome William Tackett. The local hero himself, William Tackett of Austin, Texas, born and raised just a few miles from here. One of the best middleweight grapplers in the world, number four ranked in the 185 pound division. And looking to put on a show for his fans, I'm sure, Chase. Yes, yeah, definitely the home to home hero. Looking to avenge his younger brother who recently took a loss to Mika Galvao. It's coming in hot. Let's get to it. And his opponent out of the red corner, representing Fight Sports, Miami, Florida. He is the number eight ranked middleweight no-gi grappler in the world. Please welcome Mikhail Galvao. I think that all eyes are on this young man right here, Mika Galvao. Only 17 years of age, already 2-0 and at who's number one. He has taken out some world class black belts in his short nogi grappling career but one of the the fastest rising stars in the sport one of the hottest prospects one might say and i mean people are picking this kid they call, they're already calling him the future absolutely wild color belt he was one of the most beloved athletes in brazil now he's becoming a household name here in north america and beyond this is a great matchup can't wait to see it let's try to uh, keep stuff centered up Go until I say stop. Cool. Check out some. William, you ready? Mika, you ready? Fight. Our referee, Gabe Tuttle, gets the action underway here. This final quarterfinal in the uh, middleweight division, the 185 pound in the red. Making it easy for us is William Tackett, although he does have the blue. Oh, big takedown there. Beautiful <laughs> way to start the match for Mika Galvao. I mean, that is a statement right there. Just a, a little clinch. The moment that they tied up, he hit that outside trip. Very comfortable looking, though, is uh, William Tackett. Not phased by that. But this is the thing with Mika Galvao. You cannot blink with this kid. He is so opportunistic in his attacks. Yeah, really creative. Also equally fast. You know, he, he'll dive on anything. And this is the format that really gives him a chance to explore. Interesting kind of exchange of positions here. Is with one long scramble as William starts hunting for maybe a, some kind of, I can't quite see where, where we're at now. I'm looking for a heel. Outside heel hook attempt there, briefly causing a reaction. And look at the recovery from Mika Galvao, almost coming into the mount and immediately disengages. That is some very high level technique from a very young man, only 17 years of age, hailing from Manaus in Brazil, trained by his father, Melky Galvao, also a black belt. And Mika, well, we saw him in action, as you mentioned, on who's born against Andrew Tackett, the younger brother of, of William, also holds a win over Oliver Taza, the well-known black belt under John Danaher. And, uh, and Galvao, he has beaten some world-class black belts in his time. I said it before, I'll say it again. He's beaten some seriously good black belts in his short career. And William is definitely one of those, uh, a tough test, but so far, Galvao seems more than up to the challenge. Galvao putting on some pressure here from this body lock passing position and moves into this half guard. This is dangerous now for, for William here. You know, William Tackett holds some big wins himself, if you consider his career. He has, he's tapped out Nogi World Champions. You know, he's, uh, he's scored some very impressive performances. He even was um, an ADCC Trials uh, runner-up and while well, still a teenager and, and was on the alternate list there at the World Championship in 2019 and very talented from an early age. But this forward pressure here from Galvao, he has basically stepped over the legs now and is gradually inching his way into the mount position by way of this very powerful body lock that he has. And then 
a deft hop into the side control here and not allowing Tackett any space whatsoever to bridge or to regard. Beautiful sequence there. Just a masterclass in pressure passing. Let's see what we can do with it. Williams' defense is as good as any in this division, and he knows he has to be careful, cannot give Mika his back, for example. That would be very, very bad for him. Oh, a little jailbreak style recovery there from uh, That'll do. From William Tackett recovers and resets right on the edge of bounds. So I would like to see a restart into the center of the mat here, and Galvao actually initiates that. But uh, that pressure from top position, they. We've heard before from many people say that Galvao is just so strong, that he has this incredible physicality. And I think he showed it right there. Look at this. We talked about the opportunistic grappling style, diving over the top, absolutely Stop. no fear whatsoever. But this is the kind of thing you leave your arms out with this kid and he's going to take it home. So far, looking like a very different match to when Galvao fought Andrew Tackett, uh, William's younger brother. That was a much more of a, that was just a non-stop, high-paced sort of scramble from start to finish, that match, it seemed like. But I think that William a little more calculated in his attacks, a little more um, strategic in his choices. And I think he knows that he, he can't win that battle of speed with Galvao, right? He needs to, he needs to take his time and, and really set up those entries. I think the same could be said for Mika. You know, Mika came in extremely confident against a, a young teenage Andrew Tackett. He knows William is a great black belt and fought many experienced athletes. And there's a little bit less window for error with someone like William Tackett than Andrew. Yeah, that's a great point. But he certainly found success early in Mika Galvao as he was able to pass the guard there and really control all of William Tackett's movements as we enter. 10 minute period here. No Take surprise to yeah. see Mika Galvao earning judges' favor for that first five minutes. None whatsoever. A little confusing that, that uh, William Tackett is the one wearing red, but it's actually the red ankle band <laughs> that is the, oh, look at that, another guard pass. Settles down into, oh, actually he steps back over the leg. That's an interesting strategy there from, uh, from Galvao that instead of simply running around the upper body, that at first he addresses the legs, settles the control position, and then then and look at this though the, again the jailbreak recovery there from William Tackett inserting that far side leg inserting the hook into the hip and regarding that way that's a very old school technique popularized by Eddie Bravo as far back as the uh, 2003 ADCC he used that technique to escape from Hoyler Gracie side control nice to see moves like that never going out of fashion Yeah, William Tackett, despite not getting a lot of forward uh, offense going, has stayed very composed and gone out of all all danger that Mika has put on him so far. You know, I, I'm liking William's approach at the moment. I think he he's still looking to find a, a position where he feels confident to attack, but he's been able to defend and regard, which is definitely a big part of the battle here. The composure on Galvao's face it doesn't change. His expression doesn't change in, in, in every match that I've seen him. Oh, bicep slicer! Bicep slicer from bottom from William Tackett here. Not really a, a, one of those high percentage like fight ending techniques, but something that can uh, train the energy and answering back with a straight angle attempt because, you know, I think that's smart there hey. from... Oh, nice! Nice, nice takedown there from William Tackett. Straight control for William Tackett. This is the big momentum shift here. Totally shifts the momentum. That is an apt description indeed. And you know, I was just about to wax lyrical about the fact that Tackett, that was the first legit submission attack that we've seen in this match so far. Center and it was such to the point where Galvao was like, I actually gonna need to get one back. And he was looking for that straight ankle. That, of course, led to William Tackett briefly dumping Mika Galvao to the mat and briefly holding him in that side control position. This, we got a match in our hands right here. We do, and, and you know, William has positioned himself to where if he gets the opportunity, he's in the right place to get what he needs to do done. Man, that's, that's interesting as well, because I think that, that, that shows a little more here of, of Tackett's strategy, that he's definitely playing a patient game. And I think that he understands that if you try and 
I said it before, but if you try and go head-to-head -head with this kid in, in the scrambles, if you try and uh, make it a game as to who's faster than the other, then it's difficult to win against somebody like Mika Galvao. But if he plays it smart and he gets those positions and gets them set before he executes, then he's got a better chance of success. Galvao, I don't know. I feel like he's a little more hesitant now. He's, you see he's on the outside. He's not engaging so much. I'm sure that'll change quickly. Galvao definitely likes to step on the gas. And you have to think uh, some, some moments of analysis we had earlier about, you know, William not really securing top position for too long, right? And he was actually on his back relatively quickly afterwards. So as far as what the judges are looking for, I think Galvao may still be in the lead, especially now with this diving guard pass attempt. That jump to the other side. Wow, that's so fun to watch. Multi-directional passing. But still passing. not quite completed there at this point. Yeah. This but you love to see. Yeah. I mean, that it's... Uh, a beautiful thing and so much action. The, the the attempts, they can add up over time as well, right? And it, but it's true. It's like, it, it looks good, but is it effective? And that's what the judges are really, really closely looking for here. There's a That'll beautiful do. guard pass there. <laughs> That'll do indeed. Into the mount. Oh, no. Wasting no time. Mika Galvao advances position, and that is the kind of significant action that we want to see here. Who's number one? In and out on the guard is one thing, but settling down into the mount position, one of the classic control positions in jujitsu, this is a big deal. And he's going for the squeeze here. He's going for the arm triangle choke. He's going up high. And he's forcing a big reaction here from, from William Tackett. William Tackett is turning. He's, he's getting a little panicking a little here. You can see he's fighting hard to try and turn out of it. The, we could see a submission here. Oh, he translations to the back. I think he could get it. Okay, looking at it from this angle, we see now the hand fighting. Saved, but man, I, I what feel a like squeeze it, yeah, Mika has. I feel like William Gava was in trouble there. You can tell William by the Tackett. way that he was kicking and thrashing. Excuse me, William Tackett was kicking and thrashing there from under, from underneath. Yeah, that was absolutely on, and to no surprise, clinches the judges' favor there for Mika Gava for the second time in this match. And now, arm around the neck. Uh, it is up to William Tackett to survive, oh. but this could be very dangerous. You know. Even when the arm triangle doesn't look picture perfect, it can still put you to sleep. We saw that earlier with Anna Carolina Vieira and Amanda Lowen. And we see here, look at this. We may see another arm triangle attack here from Mika Galva. William Tackett doing the best to defend, but switches back to a solid cross face, trying to open up that rear naked choke. William Tackett is gradually trying to get his shoulder between them and now does so enough that Galvao just simply transitions into the mount. But if there's one criticism of, of, of Tackett, that we saw this in his match with Lucas Hulk Barboza at Road to ADCC, that, that when he's on bottom, that his opponent often just cycles from control position to control position at will, it seems. And this is what we had here with Galvao, going from the mount to the back, back to the mount. You could say it's... Um prioritizing energy over maybe uh, defending a little harder, right? And, and William seems to be in it for the long game. We've talked about that. And his positive benefits, well, it has some detractions as well, where maybe um, a stronger fight might have paid off in the long run. But in any case, he's certainly in danger now as Mika's looking to isolate the arm once more. He's got plenty of time to do with three and a half minutes left. And William has to be flagging a little bit here under the constant pressure of Mika Galvao. But as I say that, big buck in defense. Well done from William Tackett to get back to a more neutral position. But Mika wasted no time diving in. And that's what I love about it. He doesn't really rest on his laurels. He says, okay, well, let's go again. Dives on another passing attempt. Still three minutes to work as well. So Tackett is not out of the running yet. Yes, Mika Galvao had two judges' favors so far in this match and has had some moments Look of great success. Passing attempt. Wow. I'm so impressed with the flexibility of Tackett as well, the way that he has that. But, yeah, beautiful work there, Mika Galvao there. As soon as he got those hips and threw them off to the side. Oh, my word, look at this. Escape out the back door. Out the back door for William Tackett, trying to go high up into a reverse triangle. Almost coming out like a crucifix from the bottom there. A very sneaky attack, but this could open up 
a possible north-south choke. William did manage to slide his hand in there, it looks like, but it's definitely not out of danger. My word. You cannot give either of these guys an inch. Tackett has survived some horrific positions so far in this match and is still fighting. Nice wrestle up from Taki, but Mika scrambles away. That looked pretty close, but I felt like Mika was for Mika. looking for a possible flying submission mm -hmm. attack there for a second. <laughs> oh, but look at that, just quite deftly and easily steps over into the mount once again with about 90 seconds remaining or so in this match. He makes it look so easy. Yeah, and you got to think that Williams sort of um, sort of looking for the home run, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he's saying, all right, I, I've lost the positional game. I need to get a submission. Sometimes when that mentality creeps in, you give away some positions in hopes that a mistake could present itself that wouldn't should your defenses be a little more uh, structured. Great point. Final minute, the home stretch for this match right here, and Mika Galvao still working on the neck of William Tackett. Looks like he's trying to open up a possible arm triangle attack here. You can see him trying to get those defenses, to get those arms away from the upper body. Not an easy task when somebody in, in the mountain is so slippy at this stage, is just going to keep their elbows as tight as possible. He's got a wrist control. Looks like he's got the gift wrap. He does. He has the gift wrap and manages to turn him. Looks like he was going to go for the back, but he's going to go for the arm triangle choke here. And this, this is deep. He still has enough time with which to finish this. William Tackett going for the classic defense of reaching up, but the transition there for Galvao going high once again and a little too slippy at this late stage in the match as we run into the last 10 seconds or so. But Mika Galvao, man, he really, I feel like he's going to be a little disappointed that he didn't get that finish because he had that squeeze on so tight. Stop. Working through the guard right until the buzzer. Mika Galvao, a very, very mature performance for a very young grappler, only 17 years of age. And I would hazard a guess here that he's going to take the decision. Let's see what they have to say. It is unanimous for the red. Mika Galvao. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by unanimous decision and advancing to the semifinals, Mikael Galvao. Your thoughts on that one, Chase? Amazing match for Mika. You know, uh, I love to see both those athletes on the, on the stage.